Hello, so today we're going to look at how we can authenticate users on Meraki Wi-Fi using Entra ID. Now why do we need a solution for this? Well 802.11x has yet to mature to allow more modern authentication standards and therefore we need to use certificates to do this. So let's get started. Let's head on over to our Entra ID portal. We're going to go to Microsoft Entra ID and we're going to make a copy of our tenant ID. Just pop this somewhere. Now we're going to go to App Registrations and we're going to create a new registration. So let's go to New Registrations in the top left hand corner. And we're going to give this a name. Obviously, try to have a naming convention for something like this. The next thing to do is to add a redirect URI. This is going to be Meraki SM OAuth colon forward slash forward slash com.meraki.pcc. Click register when done. Once it's loaded, we also need to make a copy of our application or client ID. The next part, we need to create a secret. Now it is important that you keep this secret. So we're going to give this a name. And we need to decide just exactly how long our secret is going to be valid for. You really do need to make sure that you come back to renew this occasionally. Now make a copy of the value. Next section, we need to work out our API permissions. Now we're going to go to API permissions and we're going to click on add a permission. And we're going to click on Azure Service Management. There should only be one here, so let's click that and click Add Permission. Now we're going to go to Microsoft Graph and we're going to look for Application Permissions. We're going to type in directory.read and there should only be two here, so let's select directory.readall and click Add Permissions. For the next part, we're going to add a new permission. We're going to go to Microsoft Graph, Delegated Permissions, and we're going to search for user.read. And you can see that it's already in there by default. So for the next section, we're going to look at redirect URLs. Now refer to the documentation for this if you need to make a copy, but here they are. So we're going to go to authentication. We're going to scroll down and we're going to be able to add a URI here. Now this is not the best interface, not the most intuitive, but just paste them in and hit add URI when you've done each one. Click save when you're done. This part is a little tricky. You might need a text editor for this, but we're going to have a look at what the manifest is that we need to be adding. Again, refer to the documentation here if need be. So let's go and click manifest on the left hand side and we can paste in or change the values that need to be changed according to the documentation. When you're done, click save. Now the last part is that we need to actually assign users and groups to our dashboard. So we're going to go to Enterprise Applications and we're going to find our application. We can search by Created On to bring up the last one that you created. Let's click on that and let's go to Users and Groups on the left hand side. Now because of my instance of Entra, I can't actually add any groups. So we're going to add uh, an individual user instead. I'm going to search for myself. There I am, so let's click me and click select. And that's our users and groups assigned. The next section is going to be much more straightforward in comparison. We're going to go to our Meraki dashboard. We're going to go to systems manager and general. We're going to scroll down. And you can see where our end user authentication settings are. So let's choose Azure and let's paste in the various values that we made a note of earlier, including Active Directory ID or Tenant ID in this particular case. Our Client ID for this particular enterprise application. 
and of course our secret as well. And let's click Save. Now we can scroll down and if you already haven't done so we need to ensure that the self-service portal is actually enabled. So let's do that. We can also default grants for new users and we can add branding if we want to. We can also default grant for trusted access as well. Click Save when done. Now we need to configure our SSID, which is again really straightforward. I've gone to Wireless and I've chosen an unconfigured SSID for this particular project. I'm going to call it Azure Auth. So let's click Save. Let's now go to Edit Options. Let's scroll down and we're going to select Enterprise with Meraki Cloud, click Save. We'll scroll down again and we're going to add a configuration. We'll give this a name that the user will see. Enter Auth in this particular case. We'll select our SM network that we've just configuring. Dynamic allows us to choose a particular length of validity for the certificate and we're going to say for all devices or users. Let's click Add. Let's now enable this SSID and click Save. And that's our configuration done. The last thing that we need to do is to actually show you what this looks like for the end user. So I'm just going to go to Systems Manager and general and we're just going to pop down to self-service portal to see what our unique url is going to be and that is right down at the bottom near self-service portal settings so let's just open that in a new tab now i'm going to log on with as you are natively as if i was an end user so let's type in my credentials there's my password and because i've got multi-factor enabled on this I'm going to actually add my code into here now as well. So let's type in my code and click verify. We are now authenticated into the portal using Entra. So now I can go ahead and see any existing devices but I'm going to click join Wi-Fi instead. I'm going to select iPhone iPad, type in device name my iPad, click add device and because this is an Apple computer, I can download the mobile configuration and install that. I can now actually go to my devices and you'll see all of the different devices that I have for Wi-Fi or for management as well.